Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll pick up where we left off with the last one, which where we described, uh, where we discussed how to simulate a cross-coupled oscillator. So this is kind of the design we left off with. <clears throat> so today we'll kind of investigate um, this tail current, how do you realize this tail current, and also what is the phase noise impact of different topologies for the tail current, right? That's kind of what I want to do. So let's get started. So let me open the last session. 2014. All right, so these are the parameters. So these are the notes that I had discussed last time. Uh, where are they? Yeah, right there. So let me just close these. Okay. So we have the first pass solution that we calculated by hand and we put it into the circuit and it turned out to work well. So I had several different parameters here, uh, ending with the phase noise figure of merit. Okay, so one change I made is that I changed the del F, which is the offset frequency at which we're calculating this phase noise figure of merit to 100 kilohertz. Uh, before we proceed, there are a couple of changes that I would like to make. So let me actually make a copy of this. So we'll call it two, make it two A, okay? So go back here, ADE. Okay. All right. I'm using a bunch of hotkeys when I do this. And if you don't know what cadence hotkeys are, I would recommend watching the previous videos leading up to this one. Okay. So uh, this is what we have. There are a couple of things that I want to keep track when we do this, which are the peak to peak voltage swing or peak voltage swing on one branch and the maximum IX, which is the maximum current that is steered through each branch, right? So let's do that. So I'll first plot this. Send this to calculator, clip this data from 10 nano to 100 nanoseconds, and then do peak to peak. And I'll send this back, it's 526, that's good. And next is this one. Send this to the calculator and just say Y max. All right, that's also good. So let me call this V peak to peak of X. And this one I'll say is I max. All right. Okay. So essentially I want to keep track of these results because I want to make sure that V peak to peak does not go beyond VTH. As we discussed, that will send the transistors into triode. We don't want that. And I also want to make sure I max. I don't know how this did not save. Okay. I also want to make sure I max doesn't exceed, uh, it reaches at least one milliamp so that we know that the entire current of this tail source is being steered, right? And when we replace this tail source with a transistor, we'll see that we would still like to get these two results to keep the rest of this circuit at least um, the same. Okay, so what we'll do is I will plot this and we look at the form, it's around minus 183. You can actually improve this a little bit. So what you can do is you can make this resistor larger and then make the inductance smaller and capacitance larger, play with these three RLC values to increase the swing and still get better figure of merit or better phase noise. Because right now we're kind of making sure this is much a little bit lower than VTH. Right? So VTH was around 580 millivolts. So you can drive it a bit harder, but I don't want to do that because we'll see that once we add transistors down here to the tail current source, that can degrade performance. So the performance that we have here is actually pretty good. So we'll set this as the benchmark. Okay, so let me save this date to today's date, which is 17. And I can close this, I'll close this, and then we'll make a copy. 
Okay, so let's go back to the nodes. So what I would like to do is to replace essentially this tail current source with a transistor, right? So that's essentially a current source if it's in saturation, uh, ignoring channel length modulation. And I can model the noise of this transistor as some current source with a power spectral density of I n square. And that noise source has a flicker noise component and a white noise component, right? So the white noise comes from the short noise and the thermal noise of this transistor. Um, and then the flicker noise obviously comes from the flicker noise component of the transistor, right? So since these two are these two noise sources are uncorrelated, coming from different sources, the powers add up, and that's what gives us this I n square bar, right? So this is a low frequency component, and this is a wide band component. So this noise is injected into this uh, LC tank, uh, sorry, the core of the oscillator and the tank of the oscillator. And the two branches in which these, the signal is injected into, these two are in phase or common mode as is known, which means that the phase of these two should be the same because looking in from this node, the circuit looks symmetric, right? Uh, so for this noise source, both the branches are sort of so-called correlated, right? Um, that's something to keep in mind, which will come into play later. But anyways, just keep in mind that this noise, the noise going into this branch and this branch, they are both correlated, right? And they're in, which is another way to say that is that it's in common mode, uh, then not out of phase. They're not exactly the same thing, but anyway, since they are highly, co completely correlated, it's common mode. Uh, actually, even if they are differential mode, they would still be correlated. So they're different things. Anyway, so yeah, they are both common mode, which means they're in phase and they are correlated. Okay. So if you go back and review, I guess the ISF model, we saw that uh, noise in from the noise source gets up converted or down converted um, around zero for, with these ISF coefficients. So if you don't know what this is, you definitely watch the ISF video. Uh, ISF coefficient C0, C1, C2, and so on. And C0 basically contributes to the flicker noise up conversion because the flicker noise is close to the zero frequency. C1, C2, and so on contrib contribute to the other components, uh, mainly the white noise components, right? Because white noise dominates after a certain frequency. Uh, and then that phase spectrum is again up converted from using the phase modulation model that we developed, that, that we showed in that other video. Okay, so if you look at the white noise, we said that the two branches are, the white noise going into the two branches is correlated, but the signals themselves are differential, right? We take Vx minus Vy, and that's why you will actually see that, later we'll see that the C1 component is um, small, C1 coefficient. Since the ISF is differential, since the output is being taken differentially, the C1 gets atten attenuated. So essentially white noise is up converted mainly by the C2, C4, C6, and so on components. Whereas the flicker noise is carried by the C0 component. And since it's a very low frequency, you can kind of approximate this flicker noise as being very close to the DC ISS, which essentially means that it's kind of a very low frequency ISS, which creates a very low frequency variation in the peak swing, V peak. Right in the previous video, we saw that the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is uh, where the ISS shows up. And because of that, you get a low frequency modulation, amplitude modulation at the output. Uh, that amplitude modulation can be converted into phase modulation by this drain bulk capacitances of these two transistors, which are varactors actually. But that's a very small effect. So we'll actually see in the simulation today that uh, this source's flicker noise is not that relevant when you don't have a VCO. So if you have varactors at these outputs, then those varactors actually convert the AM noise to PM noise, and then you have a significant amount of impact from this source. But as of now, it's not that big, and we'll see that in simulation as well. Okay, so essentially what I'm trying to say here is that this source contributes mainly thermal noise, which shows up in the 1 over F square component, and not that much flicker noise, right? Because of the way that the flicker noise is only AM and not so much PM. Okay, and we also saw that AM noise uh, doesn't contribute much to this spectrum because it's a limit cycle which attenuates AM noise, whereas PM noise contributes significantly to 
basically PM noise dominates the phase noise spectrum uh, at the output. Okay, so essentially what I'm saying is that let's replace that source with a transistor and see what happens. All right, let's do that. So let me actually do that and set it up. It'll just take a few seconds. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I have a transistor here um, and I've changed the width of this one, called it uh, the same sort of finger width, but the number of fingers I've called it N fingers tail. And I also have a bias to bias this transistor, right? So that's pretty straightforward. The only thing we need to know is what to set this bias value to and what to set the number of fingers to, right? So if you go in here, open ADE, uh, you should open it <clears throat> from this schematic. I'll say copy from cell view. And we want to set the bias to something where the noise figure of this source is low, right? And we did that already. We saw that if you go back to our test bench, NF min, and if we open this, uh, then we saw that the optimum value is around 100 uh, milli. Uh, milliamps per micro per micrometers. That was the current density we wanted to see. And this happens at around 720 millivolts uh, V-gate, right? You can go back and run that simulation from that video to check that out. So I'll set V-bias to around, let's say, 725 millivolts. And the number of fingers, we know that we want to drive about 1 milliamp through this transistor. So which means, and to get a current density of 0 0.1 milliamps per micrometer, we need 10 micrometers, right? And each finger is about half a micrometer. So we need about 20 fingers. So that's what I'll set that to. So let's run the simulation and keep track of these values. Okay. I need to save this. <clears throat> All right, so that simulation is done. And if you look at these values now, uh, IMAX is not one milliamp. That's where the phase noise form has also dropped. And VX is around, the peak to peak swing is only 400, right? So <laughs> we would like to keep the current density the same. So I'll increase this bias a little bit, just to make sure we're at the right so at this, at some bias condition, we should get exactly one milliamp going through this, right? So I'm trying to find that bias essentially. Okay, it's increasing, let's make it 750. Okay, so that's pretty good, right? So that's getting close. Uh, maybe we can try a little bit more, 760. Okay, so that's kind of close to what we had. So we can compare this to the previous result. So I'll open this. And I'll copy this plot. Paste it here. Okay. So you see that it's very close, right? So we have some phase noise degradation. Uh, of course, it's not exactly a fair comparison because if we look at this one, it's 1.07, whereas here it's only one. So we should decrease this a little bit to make it a fair comparison. Okay, so to do that, I'll actually, let me go back to 55. Even lower maybe, let's go back to 750. Yeah, we don't have to tune it this much, but I'm just kind of trying to compare them fairly, right? Seems to be very sensitive around here. Okay, I think that's close enough. So you see it's around 1.526 milli, and this one was 519. All right, so now we can compare them again. So I'll say copy and paste. Okay, so let 
this one. No, I don't want to close this. I want to close this. Okay. So we can see actually now that this tail current has not added any uh, phase noise, any any flicker noise, right? Because you can see that the separation between them is almost the same. So there's no extra flicker noise component that's been added here. So you can see it's around one dB here, or less than a dB, 0.8 dB. And maybe even here it's close to 0.8 dB, 0.9 dB, 0.8 dB or so. So, okay. So as we said that this tail current source, when it's not a VCO, I don't want to specify yes, when, when it's not a VCO, this tail current source doesn't should not contribute too much flicker noise. Of course, you'll also make sure that none of these transistors are going into triode region, right? Okay, that's all well and good, but this still has an issue, which is that this tail current source is not a very well-defined current source, right? Because it's subject to PVT variation. Because um, essentially, this one's current, DC current, depends on VTH, which can vary from process variation and temperature, a process, uh, process variation and temperature, yeah. Um, so what we would like to do is we would like to use a current mirror here. If you don't know what a current mirror is, uh, you can probably read about it from Razavi's book or from any analog book. It's essentially this. So you have this tail current source. What you do is you copy another current source here and then you diode connect it so that this one gets biased from this current source up here. Uh, for now, this will use an ideal current source, but in reality, you would use some kind of a voltage reference or a current reference. Uh, like a band gap reference. There are many different reference circuits that we can look at later. Or it could be a PMOS and you could bring your reference from somewhere else. Right? That's just basic biasing uh, circuitry. I won't go into too much detail here. But essentially, if you know what a current mirror is, you know that the equation for the current in this branch is given by the W over L ratio of these two transistors times the uh, channel and modulation factor, right? Which is 1 plus lambda VDS3 divided by 1 plus lambda VDS4. Um, where lambda is the channel and modulation coefficient, which you can, you can extract from the ID VDS plot. Okay, and since we're using short channel devices, like 45 nanometers, and it's the shortest length, uh, this lambda factor becomes quite significant. And the VDS difference between these two, these two transistors can contribute significantly to the ID, which we'll actually look at. Okay, so uh, we can get gain essentially from this. We want to make sure this ISS is small so that the power consumption of this branch is low. So if I make it, let's say, five times smaller or four times smaller, so if this is one milliamp, I make this 0.25, uh, this should be 0.25 milliamps, not microamps. So if I make this 0.25 milliamps, then the current gain factor is a factor of four, right? And that gain also shows up in uh, the flicker noise. So the flicker noise also gets amplified from this branch, this branch to this branch. And the reason I'm saying flicker noise is because flicker noise is close to DC and the gain from here to here is like a DC gain, right? There's also an AC gain, of course, but the DC gain here amplifies the flicker noise quite a bit. It also amplifies the white noise, which we'll see. So the noise source of uh, M, the noise sources of M4 matter actually a lot more than M3, which we'll also see in the simulation. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement this current mirror and I'll continue from there. Okay, so essentially I've made a copy of this out here, diode connected it, and I changed the number of fingers to now be called N fingers mirror uh, for the mirror transistor. And I have a ideal current source here, um, which is ISS. This is good enough actually, later we can make this a PMOS, but for now, I'll just leave it as this. Okay. So now we would like to see what is the impact of this on the phase noise performance. So let's do that. Okay, we will copy some more parameters. So right now, I'll just make the two of them the same size. So these two the same size. And I'll make ISS the same one milliamp. So essentially, you expect this one to be pretty much copied to this branch, right? And we'll see what happens. Okay, so everything looks fine. I'll check and save, and then let's run the simulation. 
Okay, so that was pretty fast. Move this down there. And we see it's pretty bad, right? So we see phase noise has degraded quite a bit. The swing has degraded and the maximum current is not one milliamp. So why is that? Let's take a look. If we plot the voltages at this drain, let's say this one and this one, you see there's a huge difference between them, right? So one of them is at 700 milliamp millivolts and the other one is close to 300. So that's more than twice. So this one has about more than twice the voltage VDS as this one. And if you go back to the equation, we see that VDS4 is twice VDS3. So for whatever lambda, for whatever value of lambda, you know, let's say lambda is one, right? Uh, then this would be, <clears throat> uh, let's say one plus one divided by one plus two. So that's two divided by three, which is around 0.66%, right? So if you go back here and look at the results, so we see that actually the current is, is close. It's 0.73%, right? Of uh, one milliamp that we had earlier. So essentially what we need to do is we need to increase this. So I'll make this, let's say 1.4 milliamps and we can close this. So let's run this again. Okay, so that brought it back. It's pretty close now. And again, phase noise figure of merit is also good, right? It's like minus 184. Okay, so now what we can do is, now that we know that this current is being copied, we can reduce the number of fingers on the mirror branch. So I'll make this smaller. So I'll make this, let's say, five fingers, right? Four times smaller. And I'll also reduce this by a factor of four, which is 0 0.35 milliamps. Okay. So what we can do is I'll say append and we'll see how much difference that produces. It shouldn't be much. It's actually quite a bit, right? Why? Because when you make this transistor smaller, now you have a huge gain going from here to here. Earlier, there was no gain from here to here. Now, since there is a gain from this branch to this branch, the flicker noise is amplified by quite a bit, right? As we discussed, mainly the flicker noise is what is amplified by that gain. And that's why you see this one over F cube kind of growing, right? Which is very interesting that that's what happens. So the next question we need to ask ourselves is, okay, let's actually test, right? Let's test how much um, contribution comes from this source and this source. Uh, we can do that pretty easily. So I'll say results, print, noise summary, and we want to look at, let's say the flicker noise component. So at one kilohertz offset or 10 kilohertz offset, which is the minimum that we have here. I'll include all types of noise and I want the top 20 contributors. And then hit okay. And we see that NM3 contributes about 86% of the phase noise, whereas NM2 is only 12%. So if you look here, NM3 is contributing about 86% and NM2 is only 12%, right? So it's a huge contribution coming from uh, this one. And that's the that's because this one was made much smaller, right? To reduce the power consumption. Um, so how do you fix that? We can fix it, which is the good news. Uh, so let's see how to do that. We go back here. So if you look at the expression for flicker noise, uh, you can see that it's this is somewhat of an empirical expression. Uh, and it has a constant. C ox is the gate oxide. WL is the area of the transistor, uh, the width and length, and one over F is the one over F factor in the flicker noise, right? So essentially, when you increase WL, it sort of averages out the impact of flicker noise because flicker noise comes from, I mean, there are many theories basically, but if you go and read some flicker noise books, I'll leave a link in the description uh, that describe where it comes from. Uh, they say that, okay, it can come from these dangling bonds in the uh, silicon and silicon dioxide uh, junction at the gate. So essentially, when you make this larger, uh, the effect of flicker noise from all these bonds kind of averages out over the entire area, and that's why it drops, right? Well, that's a very hand wavy explanation. I don't want to go into too much noise analysis now, but this is the expression. So essentially, we want to increase the size of this transistor by a large amount. How do you really do that? Uh, 
um, it's not a good idea to increase the length. Say I want to increase the size by a factor of 100. If I want to keep the W or L ratio the same, then I need to increase W by a factor of 10 and L by a factor of 10. Mm -hmm. But just increasing L by a factor of 10 uh, is not a good idea because the effective length of this transistor is not exactly what you set here, right? There is some diffusion region uh, around the gate, so you don't exactly get that. So the better way to do it is to actually just make copies of them and place them in series. series. And that's what Bezadar Zavi rec recommends in his book as well, uh, in the PLL book. So let's do that and then see what impact that has on uh, the phase noise. Before I move on to the, the series combination of transistors, what I wanted to mention, I guess I should have clarified this, is that when I use 350, uh, let me delete these. So this is the original from the previous case, the good phase noise. And I said, okay, I make this 350 and five fingers um, to get some current gain. So let's plot this. Okay, I said this is the phase noise, this is what it looked like. But this was not a fair comparison because I see that here IMAX and v, v peak to peak were not the same. So let me reduce this to 310. Because again, there's a channel and modulation factor, right? So now I think it's more fair. So we can even make this 305 uh, compared to what we had earlier. Okay, so I think this is fair. So let's go ahead and use these results. So I'll delete these two. So you see, it's the, the same result is still there, right? So you still have this now one over F cube term that starts to dominate because of the current gain. And there's also some white noise uh, increase, increase in the white noise from uh, the current gain as well. Okay, so now let me go ahead and make these in series combination because now we can do a fair comparison. Okay. So... Okay, so I've made the connections here and essentially it looks something like this. So we have current source and then we have many stack transistors in series and copies and we'll make the width of each of them n times larger and the length is of course n times larger because there are n of them in series, right? Um, and then they're all diode connected. So you can think of this as one single transistor rather than a series of n transistors, right? So when you think of it as one single transistor that's diode connected, that makes sense. Okay, so I've changed the, so I guess this says channel width times n fingers mirror, so it's the same thing. All right, so let's go ahead in here, and then now I've made 10 of them, so I should make the number of fingers of each of them 50, right? Um, and everything else should remain the same. Okay, so let's save that and then run this. Okay, so this is what we get, but of course this is not fair because we have much higher current than what we expect. So what I need to do is actually increase the number of fingers, right? Because you want the ratio to decrease. So I'll make this 55 and let's hide that. Let's do this again, keep track of these two numbers. It's getting better, How about 65 or 60. Again, it's not a fair comparison because we need to have the same current drop. Okay, so I think that's somewhat fair, 1.05, 53, maybe a little bit more. And you also need to make sure this current is the same right, compared to the previous case. Okay, so that's a bit of an overshoot maybe 61. Anyway, I'm kind of trying to fine tune it too much, but um, okay, that's good. So I'll stop here with the tuning at least. Okay, so now we see that we've reduced the flicker noise component quite a bit and even the white noise actually has gone down um, and we got back the results that we started with, right? So it would be a good time now to kind of compare the different models that we had to see the results. So we started with this ideal kind of model, right? This one. So let's get the phase noise of this. So let's say copy and paste. Okay. We're done with that. And then the second version, which was 
replacing it with a transistor that has gate voltage from a voltage source. So let's copy this, paste this. I'll change this color to blue maybe. Okay. Close this. And the third one was the current mirror, the basic current mirror. Got this as well. Let's say copy and paste. Okay, I'll delete these results. And we'll make this say orange. And also delete this. Okay, and the last one, which is the current result, which we can get by just running this or plotting it, I guess. Let's run it. Okay, so that's where we end up with, right? So we see that this is the ideal source. We replaced it with the transistor and it obviously went up because of the white noise from that transistor. Um, then we went here, we added a current mirror and that got much worse because it added quite a bit of flicker noise from the current gain and also some white noise. But then we were able to get rid of that flicker noise by making the size of that transistor much larger. And we got back to something that's very close to uh, the phase noise of just the tail current source, right? So at least we saw how to get rid of the current mirrors effects. Uh, we still need to deal with this phase noise degradation from the tail current source, right? And now, in fact, if you go back and look at, again, the noise summary. So let's say we, again, look at 10 kilo, um, somewhere down here, include all types. And let's say the first 20 sources. But okay, we see that the maximum contribution now is coming from NM2, which is this guy. Right, the other ones actually have almost no contribution. It's very less. All of this, all the other sources almost add up to like around four or five percent. Right, all the other transistors. So essentially, most of the noise is coming from this tail source, and in future videos, maybe we'll look at how to fix that. Right. So I think this is a good place to stop this video. Um, we've done, we've looked at how to model the tail current. Uh, or not model tail current, but how to create a realistic tail current source and make it sort of invariant to PVT variations using a current mirror and how to get rid of the phase noise of that current mirror, right? So <clears throat> a lot of this was taken from uh, Razavi's book. He also suggests adding a filter here uh, between these two sources, between these two to reduce the white noise uh, which is brought down from the C2, C4 components, but I realized that that actually doesn't do much. In fact, just stacking these up, uh, at least from the simulation, kind of gives you the same result, even with respect to white noise. So, okay, uh, that's kind of where I'll stop. And in the next video, I'll show you how to simulate the ISF, uh, first using transient analysis, and then we'll look at cyclostationary ISF and so on. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, we'll build upon this oscillator and make it more and more realistic and move it slowly towards millimeter wave and very high frequency. So thank you.